Hey everybody, I'm Jay. Think of me as a younger version of your professor, only with more hair. In this episode, I'm going to be helping Professor Roach teach you about delivery. Uh, no, not that kind of delivery. Delivery is when you share your message with your audience. Professor Roach and I will give you more details, but let me start with a quick preview. First, to effectively deliver a speech, you need to know your message. When you're comfortable with your message, then you stand up tall, look us in the eyes, and tell us what you want to say. And that, in a nutshell, is effective delivery. More details coming up next. Take it away, Professor Roach. Thanks for helping with this lecture, younger me. Now let me give you some advice. Make sure for your whole life, save 10% of everything you earn. It'll add up over time and invest that in the market. That will pay off in the long run. Thanks, wiser, older me. That's a great tip. I'll write that down. Now, about delivery. Delivery is sharing your message with your audience. That's what you need to do. You design your message, you write it, you rehearse it so that you know it, and then you stand up and deliver it without reading and without memorization. That is called extemporaneous speaking. Delivery includes both verbal and nonverbal communication. Verbal is everything that comes out of our mouth, everything your audience hears coming from your mouth. Nonverbal is everything the audience sees. Let's talk about verbal communication first. The most important thing is that your audience can hear you. The volume of your speech plays a huge role in that. How loud are you speaking? If you're speaking really softly, then your audience might not be able to hear you. This is especially true in a classroom where people are in the back row. Now, if you're speaking and you have a microphone, then that can make a difference. But if you're speaking in a room, you have to project your voice. Tempo is another important element that can affect whether or not people hear you and get your message. If you're talking too fast, people might not be able to hear what you say. And if you're talking too slowly, people might get bored. Now, another thing that makes a big difference is your inflection. Inflection is changes in pitch, the relative highness or lowness of your voice. So if you get excited, your pitch goes higher. When you wanna slow things down, sometimes your voice gets lower. Now, vitality is the enthusiasm level in your voice. Do you sound like you're really excited about what you're saying? Or do you sound like you're trying to get through your message and you're kind of monotone and you don't really sound excited? Your audience picks up on that. Make sure you sound excited. Make sure you sound the way your message was written to sound. Another aspect of your voice is your tone. Everybody has a unique tone of their voice. We can change our tone if we want to sound angry, if we want to sound sad, if we want to sound really happy, all of those are ways to change our tone. But each person has a unique tone, which is called a timbre. And this is true for, for speakers and for singers. You could have two classically trained sopranos singing the exact same song, hitting the exact same notes, and their voices will still sound different because they have a unique timbre, a unique sound in their voice. Your unique voice is an asset to you. Nobody else in the world sounds exactly like you. Take advantage of that. Your voice is an asset. Pronunciation and articulation are critical as well. Audience members sometimes have a hard time hearing. Over articulate at first. Articulation, by the way, is the same thing as enunciation. So clearly articulating every consonant and every vowel that you speak. I actually attended a church service one time. It was a memorial for a friend of mine who had passed away, a very old friend. 
And most of the people in the audience were elderly. And the pastor who did it was speaking to an elderly audience. Everything she said sounded like this. And she made sure that she articulated every syllable, every consonant, and every vowel so that the people in the audience would understand. Now, you don't have to exaggerate that much, but no mumbling. Mumbling is like this, right? And then pronunciation is how we sound out the words. There are people who have sloppy pronunciation. They'll say things, and this is something that is a pet peeve of mine, but they'll say things like milk, which is a beverage that comes from cows. It's really milk. Pronounce things properly. Regional affectations affect this. If you're from the South, for example, you might say South instead of South, all right? So if you're from New York, you might say New York instead of New York. And if you're from Nolens, you might say Nolens instead of New Orleans. So pronounce things so that your audience will understand them. This is, these are important elements of getting your message across using your verbal communication, using your voice. So when you speak, speak like you mean it. Speak like you're not there to get through a speech. You're not there to just, what did I write down and how do I, what do I have to say to these people? Speak like you've got something important to say. You're confident about it. You think you've got a good message and you want to convey that to your audience. If you're excited about something, if you're passionate about something, your audience will pick up on that. They will share that passion. If you're angry about something, let that voice show it. Nobody should be getting away with that, all right? Whatever. If you're sad about something, let your voice show that. Now, nonverbal communication is everything your audience sees. So number one, dress appropriately for every speech. Dress like you're dressing for a job interview, business attire, or business casual. You should stand up straight and tall. Now, young Jay, who you saw at the beginning, he likes to stand up straight and tall. But if he does, his head goes out of the screen. And so I have to have him duck down a little. I can show you that. <laughs> but uh, that's why he wasn't always standing up tall, because when he does, his head goes out of the screen when I'm animating him. So stand up straight and tall. Body weight should be distributed evenly. Don't rock back and forth or shift from side to side. No rocking back and forth. Gestures should seem natural. You should move your hands and they should move and follow your cadence. So as your voice expresses something, your hands should move when you do that. Can you guys see this? And just like your voice should match the mood of what you're saying, your facial expressions should match what you're saying. So if you're mad about something, if you're talking about um, a political issue that you're upset about or something that happened, let your face show that, get into it. And eye contact, this is the most important thing, one of the most important things, but it's critical. It's one of the things I take off for most of the time when I'm grading. Don't look down and read your notes. Look us in the eyes the whole time. When you're in a room, go from person to person to person. I always tell my students, make eye contact with every single person in the room. Look at them long enough so that it's not awkward, so that your eyes lock but just for a split second, don't stare at people's eyes. That could get creepy. At least 95% of the time, you should be looking in people's eyes. Now, if you're online, that means looking at the camera. So looking at notes should be just a quick glance and then looking back at the people. If there's a podium, stand behind the podium. If there's no podium, move around a little bit. Deliberate movements. There are other elements of nonverbal communication as well, though. These include props. What are you showing us? Make sure that whatever you show us, your audience can see it clearly. If you're holding up something, make sure you hold it where people can see it. This is true for if you're doing it online or if you're doing it, uh, make sure the picture you wanna show is on there. If you're holding it up, make sure you hold it long enough so people can see it. Don't be shaky and make sure that your audience can see it for a long enough period of time. 
Don't be afraid to pause and show it. Make sure your audio and visual elements are working properly. If you've got a video to play for us, play it beforehand and make sure it works. Make sure the speakers work. This happens all the time in classrooms. The speakers are not set up properly. So make sure it works. Make sure the internet is working properly. All of these things you do as part of your delivery. As Ben Franklin said, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. He was emphasizing the fact that we have to prepare if we want to succeed. So how do you prepare? Number one, you know your material. You write a good speech, then you rehearse it. You rehearse it out loud. It's critical that you do this out loud so you can hear yourself. You can feel the cadence of your voice. Rehearse in front of a mirror. Rehearse with a live audience. Rehearse to your cat. Whatever you want to do, but rehearse it out loud and time yourself. You should also have cues, little pickup cues that you can use to help remind you if you lose your track to get back on track. Another thing, if you're speaking to a live audience, always have a few friendly faces. I call these audience plants. You're planting somebody in the audience to help you out when you need it. So if you say, does anybody have any questions? Your friend is gonna raise their hand and ask that question. That's important because nobody wants to be the only person asking a question, but if somebody goes first, other people will follow. It's how things work. And then always remember this, this is not a performance. It's sharing meaning. You're communicating with your audience. So practice your relaxation techniques, visualize success, overcome your negative self-talk. You can do this. This is a great way to prepare for your speech. And remember, this is not a performance. You're communicating. You're sharing ideas through verbal and nonverbal communication. For online speaking, there are quite a few differences between speaking in person and speaking online. And there's two ways to do it online. One is a recording, and another is when you're in a Zoom meeting or some kind of live presentation. In both cases, your audience is actually a camera. So you're speaking to an audience through a camera, a microphone. This one's not plugged in. I'm just using the laptop's mic. And you're also relying on the internet. All of those things make it easier for interference to occur. If your camera doesn't work right, if your microphone doesn't work right, if your internet cuts out, all of those things can affect, adversely affect your speech. So you must also maintain attention because you've got to realize that when you're online, your audience is probably multitasking. They're probably just nodding along if you're in a Zoom conference and uh, playing on their phone at the same time. So you've got to keep people's attention. That's one of the reasons I include animations and sound effects in these video lectures. It helps compete with TikTok and other things that you might be doing while you're listening. So I know that. And you need to know it too as a speaker. Make sure you're in a quiet place and you speak with a clear, loud voice because the microphone doesn't pick things up as well as people's ears do. So you're not just speaking to us, you're speaking to us through a microphone. And it's critical that your voice be picked up by the microphone. As far as eye contact, you have to look at the lens. That's the only way people know you're looking at them. You should also have a bright light on your face. Let me show you what happens when I turn this off. Here's what happens when I don't have a bright light on my face. Totally different look. You can't see my eyes as well. So I'll turn that back on. That's just one. And here's the other one. It gives me a little warmth. All right, so it makes a huge difference. If you're reading something off screen, move your head a little bit. This is what news anchors do when they're reading off a teleprompter. They just move their head a little bit so it looks like they're not reading. That's what you need to do if you're reading something. For this class, you should not be reading something. So for this class, stand up tall. Make sure you're visible on camera from the shins up. I was going to have a requirement that you be visible from head to toe. But when I did my speech of introduction, I didn't want to put on shoes. So I went barefoot and I said, you could show yourself from shins to the top of your head. All right, but you have to be visible for this class. If you're doing a Zoom presentation, you want your face and your head and shoulders to be what's in the shot. 
So for a Zoom call, you want your head to be close to the camera. You want head and shoulders. You don't want to see the whole body because you're going to see that in a little tiny box on a screen filled with other, other squares of people's heads. So get your face in the shot. This is for Zoom only. This is not for a speech. But for Zoom, get your head close to the camera so you have a head and shoulders shot, a close-up we call that. Be brightly lit and look at the lens. So that's how your professor and his younger self would teach you about delivery. The textbook has a lot more ideas and a lot more information. So read the textbook. There will be questions from the textbook on the quiz. Thank you for watching.